<laughs> Doesn't matter. Nah, you should be fine. Should be fine. Oh, why is it oh, echo? echo coming from? Okay. Okay, that's weird. Um, do you have anything else is on? The other mic might be on? No. Uh, everything should be good. See, I hear it. I don't hear it now at all. Now it's fine. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put the two minute <coughs> streaming soon and then we'll get ready to go. Yep. Can you tag somebody? Can you tag me in it? In the live? Just make sure. Does it usually take two or three minutes for a notification to come in when you go live? Hey Chris, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for uh, um, having the classroom and this platform uh, for the consumers and for the vendors and uh, um, small businesses. And also thanks for Hoopy University for having uh, the group and for having us uh, on here and allowing us to do this. <laughs> I just realized the audio was off for a split second, but yeah.
like we're saying, we're just thanking everyone for being here. Thank you for uh, participating. Really quick, Badia, uh, a lot of people have issues with your name, so I want to get that out there. I got a couple uh, good, good ones here. Uh, I say Badia. A lot of say a lot of people say Badia, Badi, uh, Badia. <laughs> so I, I mean, your your name I don't think is too hard, but I think a lot of people have uh, some issues saying it. Can you correct it for everyone so we say it right when we see you at uh, any future events? Sure. Uh, so my my name in Arabic, I could tell you that my my original name is Badia. Okay. Uh, with uh, that letter ah, in the end, which okay. is it doesn't exist in English. So the, the pronunciation is uh, Badia or Badia okay. is okay. okay. Uh, now I've heard uh, Badia before, uh, which, you know, I kindly corrected, like, you know, say Badia or Badia, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I've actually never corrected people because it doesn't sound like Arabic. And it always, every time people say it, it just sounds more um like oh i like this pronunciation of my name it's just a new variation of it so uh i like it but badia yeah, yeah. Uh, or badia is uh is good okay so, so badia is the way to go um because it's not badi like matt said no it's not it's not it's not the d because there's an a at the end so uh badia or badia uh and shout out to matt descent from uh uh, am, yeah, I, uh, I have yeah. To, I have to poke a little bit of fun at uh, at Matt there because he's my buddy and he likes to butcher names from time to time. But okay, so let's get into it. Uh, thank you, Kristen. Hello, nice to see you there, uh, Ash and Bracken and everyone who's here so far. Uh, so, so Ash, yeah, uh, Ash, I don't wanna, I don't wanna uh, cut you off, but mm -hmm. uh, Ash said he cannot hear you, but he can. Hear yeah, me. yeah. Well, I think we fixed that. We uh, we had an audio issue at the beginning, right. but I I uh, I had our mics off for a split second. Uh, sure. Yeah, so that should be fixed now. They should be able to hear. Hopefully, you guys should be able to hear us. Um, so really quick, Alpha Comma, you are the guy that everyone knows in all the groups. Uh, you got Hookah enthusiasts. You got THL out there, and of course, Hookah University that way now. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you do for the company? Yeah, for sure. Um. So uh, I'm the CEO and founder, uh, one of the f founding uh, partners in the uh, USA uh, branch. So we're the exclusive distributors uh, for uh, Alpahama in the USA. Um, and uh, I have a couple of partners or VPs uh, on uh, different uh, functionalities and different uh, uh, things that they have to do for the company. But uh, right now I'm running as a CEO of that company in the USA. Wow, you got, that's some big shoes to fill. And it's not always that you have a CEO of a company that is so easily reached through Facebook and other social media platforms that will sit down and have a conversation with you about their product. Uh, Badia always makes time, as you can see from here. He has even made time for this little interview. So uh, really quick, can you tell us any like background on how Alpha Comma was formed as a company? Uh, sure. Uh, Alpha Comma brand. Let me say Alpha Comma brand was... Uh... Uh, started in 2011 as a brand. The factory itself has been in the business for uh, quite a long uh, time, but the brand itself and the uh, breaking of the actual factory uh, started in 2011 for the production of the actual uh, brand itself. And from there, uh, it took off in the Middle East, in Russia, in Europe, and recently two years and a half now in the U.S. That's impressive because I think, uh, me personally, I've just been introduced, I think back in December, to this brand. And it's it's been around for a while. Has, I think, have you have you changed up marketing uh, techniques or uh, overall uh, doing, thing, doing things differently in the United States to more get your brand out there? So, uh, yeah. So, we, we're taking the, um, we're taking the approach of verticals, mm -hmm. right? If you actually had to buy the verticals of the U.S., into East Coast, Midwest, and the West, uh, and, uh, East, uh, the West Coast. Uh, so we would focus in on where our headquarters is. So we're headquartered out of the East Coast. We have uh, two operation uh, warehouses, one in uh, the Washington DC area, metropolitan area, and uh, New Jersey. Uh, and we're focusing on the East Coast mostly, uh, most of the time. Uh, and we are introducing ourselves into we're easing ourselves into the market as building the brand mm -hmm. uh, 
taking uh, different approaches in marketing uh, from a uh, perspective of going to the consumer directly uh, and to the small smoke shops and the actual uh, hookah lounges in general. Uh, now, as uh, we, we grow bigger uh, in operations, we change the actual um, uh, particular marketing uh, approach for uh, al -Fahama. So we want to uh, get to more people, we we'll get to uh, more places, more uh, kind of states, mm -hmm. but that's, uh, that's a, a kind of a slow and steady approach. Uh, and we are not going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we're taking our chances. We're taking our uh, uh, kind of steps yeah. into how to introduce the, to the market. We don't want to shock everyone. Oh, here's another new product. But yeah. we want to be able to introduce and ease the product and let the, um, what do you call it, uh, word of mouth yeah. to, uh, to get to people. Yeah, and I think the word of mouth has been uh, fairly positive. I think, um, especially with, uh, I am a fanboy of the passion fruit flavor. Uh, it was the first flavor I was introduced to uh, at the hookah fair uh, from Alpha Comma. From I think it was uh, someone you work with out in Jersey. Uh, they had a booth there set up, and they were uh, introducing people to Alpha Comma. And up to that point, I wasn't really familiar with it. And uh, once I had that flavor, I was like, holy crap, I don't know who they are. Or what they do but this flavor right here if if there are other flavors or anything like this passion fruit i am totally on board uh i see kristen here has a question i see people doing reviews and they receive samples or whatnot to review how do i start getting into that with myself starting to learn more about the hookah and the brands trying my own different mixes i've been thinking about possibly starting reviews but i'm not 100 percent sure so yeah we'll get off topic i don't think that's a uh, specific question for Badia. I think it's more of a geared question, I think, for reviewers. But, uh, Kristen, I say just start getting into it. You should start sampling and start reviewing flavors that you like and that you're passionate about and that you think people are maybe not aware of. And especially if you're doing mixes, people are always in the market for trying to mix different flavors and stuff like that. So, uh, when, when later on, when you're free, feel free to, to shoot me a message or shoot Matt or shoot Adrian uh, Hunter a message. Or you can even uh, shoot Sally, uh, Shisha Savage, or I think Pearl, I think might be starting to do reviews. So there's a lot of reviewers out there that are more open. So if you are uh, willing to sit down, I can definitely uh, uh, answer whatever questions you have after this session. But right now, let's keep getting back into it because I am super interested. I love, so we talked about, I love the passion fruit. Love, love, love. A lot of people who've had the passion fruit, I think uh, Paul was smoking passion fruit today and he was just like in Nirvana. Uh, how many total flavors do you have compared to how many total flavors are released in the United States right now? Can we, can we get yeah. a number on that? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, so the, um, the company, uh, we produce 130 flavors, 130 Ooh. plus flavors. Yeah. Uh, that is, uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, currently in the U S, uh, we have, uh, around 49 flavors, right. Um, and we are introducing from now until the end of the year, uh, probably 20 plus more flavors. I love that. So we're going to have a collection and, and, and flavor that we, you know, we, uh, we evaluate as a company that, uh, should we, uh, you know, pursue, or we should, you know, focus on other stuff that what the actual market needs and what the actual markets demand, uh, mm -hmm. from, uh, from retail versus uh, wholesale versus, uh, the lounges. Yes. So this is what you're going to take, um, uh, from an evaluation, uh, point, but we will introduce more and more, um, throughout this year. Yeah, specifically, uh, we started uh, with literally about uh, twenty flavors, and now we're up to like uh, forty-nine flavors. Yeah, and so I think it's very smart uh, not to cut you off, but how you're doing it—you're releasing them in waves. Because if you just release all the flavors at once, now people don't one don't know what to try. They don't know what some of your best flavors. Because I think no matter what the to, the company is, they have their best hitters no matter what. Um, so I think it's really smart how you're doing the sectioning because it also gives you a chance to see regionally the feedback you get from loungers and consumers because what I smoke here and what the loungers like to smoke here aren't necessarily, necessarily what they want to smoke in Nebraska or California or Dallas, you know, so it is very, it is very interesting to hear that and the fact that they are taking the time uh, to really get that feedback from the consumers and the retailers to see what's what and tweak it according and uh and to go forward so you've been with alpha comma since what early 2011 uh i, I actually got introduced to alpha comma in 2014 2014 uh, okay. and i smoked alpha comma uh great mint 
Mm -hmm. I used to get that straight from the UAE. We're based on Dubai mm -hmm. and UAE, Al Najman, uh, United Arab Emirates. That's where the tobacco is being made. Yeah. Uh, United Arab Emirates. And uh, my, my uncle over there mm -hmm. he used to send me samples because he knows I'm a hookah enthusiast. Is that, I, is, that, is that the gentleman? Uh, th does he have a social media? I would love to see his social media. <laughs> uh, no, he actually, he doesn't have any social media. He's, he's my, my uncle was just, uh, he's, uh, he owns a, a restaurant there. He's a good uh, friend of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the the owners and the production managers over there. And uh, they give him stuff and he sampled me stuff over here. And I just got hooked to the grape mint itself because I'm a grape mint. Uh, and Matt, uh, the scent said, "What's my favorite uh, uh, flavor?" It's it to me. I'm a grape mint uh, smoker, mm -hmm. and uh, and I love uh, and I love the smoking that. So, uh, but now since I'm in the business, uh, I smoke uh, almost uh, everything on the on the line. Yeah. Uh, but my go-to will be uh, grape mint. Grape so mint. I yeah. Just, 14 and in 2016 i picked it up and uh, uh start working within the usa and distributing that's awesome that's interesting that's to know uh it's funny because i think there's a poll if you go to uh alpha commerce website uh they did like top five uh favorite flavors i think grape mint is number one a lot of people will agree with you that grape mint is one of them i haven't tried it yet i uh will definitely try to get my hands on that soon but uh yeah that's 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 cool man uh so Alpha Comma, I guess, I don't necessarily want to call it the new kid on the block because it has been around, especially for a time overseas. Um, how do you feel that it's, it, it uh, stacks up to other companies such as Al, uh, Alpha here and Karma, which I think a lot of people would compare your tobacco to those companies? Oh, uh, yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, let me just say the, the, the like, it's almost for Alpha uh, here. And for Fumari, and for Starbucks, and for all the flavors, for all the companies that produce uh, blonde leaf, um, it's absolutely uh, great because it keeps you uh, innovating, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the healthy competition is absolutely uh, incredible. It's very important to us, mm -hmm. as, uh, as it's core to us to be able to introduce new things to the market and on it and uh, have actually a um a different take on uh, the original traditional flavors um and uh, everyone compares us to all the companies to karma to al -Fakhir, to starbucks mm -hmm. uh, uh for my it depends on the flavor some of our flavor uh, profiles don't have uh that, that al -Fakhir don't carry it or starbucks don't carry it or stuff like that so we have to be unique in our flavoring uh to to have our own name because yeah. there's always traditional flavors. Everyone has the orange mint. Everyone has the grape mint. Everyone has the double apple. Mm -hmm. But everyone has their own take on it too. Yes. So that's what uh, I think is uh, it's in favor of the consumer himself. Yeah, so, I, I think it's very important too that you're, you're making the point uh, that you know, like when a new company comes around or you know you have direct competition, it pushes those older companies to be like, hey, listen, this company is coming out with a new batch of grape mint or orange mint or whatever it is, right? Now you, it pushes everyone to up their game a little bit more to make sure that quality is still there that we all expect from companies. And I think it's very good. Yeah, and I think uh, there's um, this market that we're in, which is the United States market, is such a large market. It's enough for everyone to have a playing field, mm -hmm. for everyone a fair playing field. So. Um, to have, for instance, like uh, our, our best seller is passion fruit and passion fruit mint. And everyone knows that Fatama for the passion fruit and passion fruit mint. And uh, we have great other stuff too. So um, when you get when you get that name and the trust and the loyalty for the brand, people are willing to try other stuff too. So, uh, and they may, may, may not like it. Mm -hmm. may, I like it so it is uh it is okay to be compared to others because that's what people know that's what uh they they used to that's what's been in the market for a long time which yeah. is Starbucks and Al I so. think you're always going to compare it to something you're currently smoking to get a reference yeah. point I think it's very important to like hey uh I've been smoking mint from this company from from x company from so long there's a new there's a new mint on the market from uh, z company 
you know, you taste the one from Z, you taste the one from X, and you, you go from there. Which brand better suits your taste buds? Because tobacco uh, flavor is all very subjective. Now, I had a question. This was a question I had. I, uh, where, where does the tobacco come from? Where do you, where do you uh, I guess, I don't know if it would be manufacture or grow it. Can we? No, we, we, we don't grow our own tobacco. Uh, uh, obviously, we focus on the production of the tobacco, uh, um, and the end product, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, we purchase uh, tobacco that's uh, premium, and then we try to be premium in the market. Uh, of course, uh, the feedback has been incredible, uh, uh, awesome so far on the actual uh, uh, tobacco uh, uh, kind of like leaves mm -hmm. if, and and everything that makes the product itself. So being very good. So we only stick to uh, premium uh, product. Uh, and to also stay in a reasonably price. Uh, of course, I mean price point. I mean also drives the quality. But you want to you want to you want to get that fine line between that quality product and making sure you're not breaking the bank at the same time. No, absolutely. I mean, um, and at the same time, we introduce it into the market. Not saying um, anything about the price point. The price yeah. point sometimes it it may and may not drive the quality of the product. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so it may, it may not, but always, uh, it's always helpful um, to be able to know what's in that, it's in that product. But you can tell. Uh, most most people can, most people cannot. But uh, nowadays, uh, everyone's uh, experience about the flavor they get, the longevity of how long the flavor lasts, not how long the tobacco lasts. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all this couple points people now nowadays look for. Yeah, and I, I really think that, you know, what you put into it, your dedication and, and, and your research and the time and all that stuff really shines through in the end product because when you sit down and do smoke a bowl of Alpha Kama, you're like, wow, okay, this is, this is really flavorful. It's really good. It's hitting all the right notes. Um, and I think, as you said before, there's a lot of uh, different, you know, flavors to choose from. Now, to get a little bit more into the man behind Alpha Kama, Badia. Can you uh, give me what was your first experience in the hookah? What was your first like, you know, time sitting down and be like, "What is hookah? Wow, this is great. This is something I want to get into." Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, traditionally, I think uh, Tam from Street is part of our culture. It's very hard not to know what it is. Yeah, he, he, had uh, very, he had a very interesting story. Uh, growing, up, grow, growing up in Syria. Um, and so maybe I was, you know, when I was 14, um, you know, I've always heard my, my, my dad and my grandparents always talking about my dad, how he was a, a, a cigarette smoker for the longest time until he almost, you know, lost his life because of that. And then he stopped and caught like, uh, uh, cold Turkey on that stuff. And then picked up hookah <laughs> uh, later, later in life, yeah. uh, later in life when, you know, so, so I was 14 and I see him smoking that, um, and you're probably and, uh, you're probably like, what is this thing? What what is this contraption that he's smoking? Sure, with? sure, I, I I was, and it was like, uh, this thing that produces smoke. So, um, <laughs> I think my at the, at the beginning, my dad was smoking. Of course, at the time, it was like double apples, nachla double apple, which is. What was uh, there any uh, other flavor yeah. at the time that people were smoking? Because that seems like that was the flavor. <laughs> no, no, I don't think there was there was nachla in Syria. There's like dominant uh nakhla double apple and then uh, the the the, the nakhla mixed fruit okay so uh my experience was with double apple first around 15 uh maybe uh, overseas is okay did, did you uh, did you enjoy the, the double apple, apple the first time you smoked it because i i was like what the hell is this this is crazy this don't taste yeah. like apples at all you don't know anything else you don't yeah. know anything else you, get, you smoke it you, you take two puffs and then your your head is spinning the room is spinning everything is <laughs> and you, uh, slowly build that tolerance for it uh yeah. So when I, when I came to the U.S., you know, I, I brought uh, my dad brought hookahs and stuff like that over here, and then uh, maybe 2001 when we got introduced to uh, al fakhir uh, grape and grape mint, and ever since then I picked up the other flavor because <laughs> I don't get a headache from it and yeah. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So uh, 2001, I would say 2000 2001 when I start actually have my own hookah, my yeah. own session, and corrupting all my <laughs> around me <laughs> that's how uh, it starts one person hookah. buys a hookah that everyone else like symbiotically gets a hookah, and, uh, I mean, hookah for me is more it's a social thing to yes. be honest it's, it's a very social thing and i don't like i smoke for 
30, 40 minutes, 45 minutes by myself, and that's it. But friends over, we smoke for two, three hours, and we swap heads, and we, we, we change the bowls and all that stuff. But by myself, like, I don't like to smoke by myself, to be honest. Yeah. It's just, and it won't be a long session. It's going to be over. Like a testing session. We smoke for two, like three that. hours. And still, still, uh, still nowadays, I smoke. Uh, with friends for a long change the bowls and all that stuff, but sorry about that. Okay, so I realized that by uh, I don't think by comments here we're refreshing. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, Kale, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Uh, yeah, bracket audio issue. Okay, let's see, let's go back up here because I saw I saw uh, Dominic's in here. What's up, Dominic? Tony, you know, you got Tabali Sammy. What's up, buddy? Jafar, Jafar actually just won, he was the winner of our last giveaway. I wonder, did he, uh, you gotta let me know if you got the stuff yet, buddy. Amanda, how are you doing? Uh, then you have uh, Mr. Dutch in the house as well. Uh, so, so we got we got that we got that out of the way. Your first hookah experience, very interesting, a very cultural thing. Um, so, am I right? You're so you're a new father, and I know there's a lot of other new fathers in here as well uh, in the community. Uh, congratulations to all the new fathers out there. I am a single guy. Uh, well, not single. I am seeing someone, but I'm, I would be on the single spectrum, I guess. No kids, so it's very easy for me to smoke in the house. And this was always a question to uh, to fathers I had, uh, or, or people uh, I guess that had kids or dogs or something. How do you smoke in the house with a young child? You know. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is a disclaimer. This is not something anyone should follow because everyone should care for the kids the way they want to. Uh, this is not advocating on how to smoke, but I smoke only after 12 o'clock, 11, 12 o'clock at night when my kid go to sleep because he stays up late. Yeah. So uh, I put him to sleep around 11, 1130, and then I go all the way down to the basement and I smoke in the basement with humidifier and, and uh, uh, HP filter, whatever that thing is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like right there, right outside, I mean, uh, by the basement stairs so nothing goes up yeah i close i close the vents of the acs and the heat in the basement so the smoke doesn't go up or the smell of the uh charcoals go up either yeah so yeah. that's how i do it and and by the time he wakes up in the morning because i only smoke for like an hour or so mm -hmm. there will be no smell no nothing in the house not even the living room or anything like that so uh it's like a three level um house and i smoke in the basement and he stays in the living room and in the, in the, in the bedroom, uh, third floor. So yeah. that's, that's what I say. That's not a disclaimer. There's, yeah, there's, no, that's, no that's, follow. that's uh, hilarious. I'm not advocating for that either. He, he's, he's, he's giving you all the little minute steps that he does to make sure to smoke in his, can I call it a man cave? Is it, I mean, your basement's kind of like a man cave a little bit. It is, it is a man cave. And also my, uh, I have my home office yeah. down here. So I spend a lot of time in the basement. Uh, as you can see, I have my home office around uh, right here. That's where we've taken the interview at. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that's I take a lot of steps because, uh, yeah. you know, no one wants nothing but the best for their kid. Yeah. So uh, you try to do that. And now when the weather gets uh, better, I only would smoke outside, even if at 11, 12 p.m., mm -hmm. 12 a.m., I'll go outside and smoke. I wouldn't smoke in the basement either. So. Oh, well, that's, that's good to see you take all the precautions. So Sammy here says, so how's grape mint? DA, I'm not sure what DA is. Uh, lemon, double, so double, double apple. apple. Okay, DA is double apple and lemon mint, orange mint, and if you have a grapefruit mint, um, I would say, uh, we have a very good feedback on the lemon mint and the grape mint, uh, and the grapefruit mint so far, and orange mint. Uh, I'll be honest with you, the double apple, it's it depends what you're used to from the apple. Double apple is a very hard, uh, very traditional flavor. Um, and everyone, almost the uh, smokers who have been smoking for 10 plus years, been smoking double apple for a long time and tasted the double apple. So uh, everyone should be the judge of each flavor from our side. But I can tell you the feedback has been uh, great on all those flavors that you listed. A uh, double apple is, is it's very, very subjective, yeah. very subjective, hard too. So. Yeah, I, I, w I wouldn't necessarily recommend double apple. Not to say that it's not good. Double apple is a very more traditional flavor, and I, I do I do enjoy it from time to time. It's not my everyday smoke, but double apple is definitely the left field flavor. Like if you if you're smoking stuff like grape and mint, and then go to double apple, you're gonna be in for a world of uh, shock a little bit there for double uh, apple. Yeah. 
different different animal different animal yeah. so uh, so I, I wanted to see i think i asked him the same question uh what are some brands you enjoy besides your own um i so for a long time i mean i smoked up here for a long time and i still do uh and um uh, uh i've smoked uh, recently uh got introduced to the dark leaf uh I have a lot of appreciation for uh trifecta and to moose so what he's doing over there mm -hmm. uh incredible incredible guy uh i really enjoy morning glory and i say it oh, yeah. openly i say it openly uh and i, I tell, yeah. I tell I, every time i meet uh, moose uh, in any occasion I tell him how much I love it, and uh, he's he's been uh, he's been very great, very open-minded. He uh, he also enjoy uh, some some of our uh, passion fruit and other flavors that we have. In that's that's awesome to hear that you not uh, you just don't smoke your own brand, and that you are out there trying other brands out and really enjoying them as well. Um, it's different owning the business of yours. That's the one thing, and you know, enjoying on a personal level other stuff too. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy a lot of the stuff that we have. I'm very every time I surprise myself of uh, uh, every flavor that we bring to the market, and I just get excited how the consumer is going to react to it. But uh, in general, there's great stuff in the market that I enjoy mm -hmm. and I and I smoke. Uh, but nowadays I don't smoke it as much because I have so much tobacco to try, so much thing to uh, test. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so I'm not quite on your level yet, but I, I definitely have a lot of flavors here, like too much to smoke in even a year's span. Boys wants you to talk about his uh, about your guava. He's been he wrote this in all caps, so I think he's pretty serious about this. So for for the longest time, I have my best friend who lived in uh, lived in Cali for the longest time, uh, and she uh, always mixed. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if he, she got it uh, from someone or she mixed it and called it. Uh, it's lemon mint guava. And that was her favorite things to mix from, uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure, guava from Mafakhir and lemon mint from Fumari probably. But um, that that's my, my go-to for smoking guava. And I taste guava and the feedback on our guava was it's very natural. It's like it's actually thing. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I want to say about the flavor of our fruits is it's very natural tasting. So if you like that, you might enjoy uh, what we have uh, from this brand, uh, but uh, our guava has been, you know, surprisingly a lot of good feedback on it, and I'm super super happy about it. And I really now enjoy it uh, more and appreciate it uh, more when I smoke it and mix. But I mix it with lemon mint all the time. So. Well, well, Dutch here has a question: Is it green green guava or red guava? I didn't realize it was. I'm not too familiar with the guava plants, so it's green guava. Uh, we don't make the red guava. I don't know if that, I, I'm not sure, but it's, it's green guava, uh, Dutch. Okay. So, so being involved in the tobacco company and branding, it seems that you really have your ear to the ground. Um, I've talked to you before, so I know you are familiar, more than familiar with the industry. I'm curious, uh, what are some things that you want to see? going forward in uh i guess in the hookah communities or the hookah industry that you would like to see like a personal idea in your own brain that maybe you would like to see actually materialized uh sure i i think the um so i've been and i think many people will share this and maybe you do too uh the hookah scene uh from the expos uh from uh, other stuff that in, in the united states is a little bit weak and that's what uh, uh and jake uh, hookah John, uh, or really being bold and uh, taking on uh, doing this hip hookah expo worldwide mm -hmm. uh, because it's not easy to organize an expo. It's not easy to get people there. It's not easy to uh, kind of uh, market and advertise such a thing. Uh, but I'm, I'm very, very uh, grateful for them for doing this. And uh, that's what I want to see more because I've been. Uh, Al Pajama was in uh, the Brazil Expo, uh, not uh, this year and the year before. I went to the year, not this one, the year before. Yeah. And the turnout was amazing. And then we see the, the things that in, in Germany um, also. Oh, uh, yeah, they're such amazing, partners, amazing events. Partners. It's amazing over there. Same thing in Russia. Yeah. There's no 
often there's no reason this we do everything big and then hookah john and jake have probably say the same thing we have have uh a, a great a great market and far more people <laughs> in this uh in this land in this region than anywhere else and, and a lot of hookah smokers not going wrong a lot of hookah smokers in this country but how do we get them to go out there? How do we get them to uh, engage? How do we get them to that? And that's only by the word of mouth and having and vendors showing up to those expos and marketing and getting their people and their followers out there. Yeah. So that's what I want to see. I want to see more of uh, the hookah uh, communities and the hookah experience and hookah expos mature and have people fly over from different countries, not from the States only. Yeah. To be able to say, I want to be in the the hookah, exclusive hookah expos. Yeah, That's all, you almost like you want it to be like, you know, this exclusive like premier event and you want people to be excited for it. Um, I mean, obviously, I saw you out in Chicago. So there's been more grassroots uh, conventions or meetups. And uh, the one I just recently went to was in Chicago. I had an amazing time. You had Nino out there. You had guys repping uh, Superior Coco. You had, uh, I think it was also uh, Karma. Someone from Karma was out there, I believe. Yeah, Oz and Ash was there too. Yeah, they, it was it was an awesome time. It was nice to meet people that you talk to all the time on the internet, and you actually go and go to a place and sit down and actually like meet them in person, which is fantastic. So not only is he saying he wants to see other vendors and to come out and start being a part of like the bigger community and doing more events but he actually also went out to chicago so he's a man of his word so he's not just preaching off a high horse or anything like that so while we're on the topic of expos and meetups so you were just announced for the hookah expo hookah john's expo in vegas you got a booth and it's not it's not a small booth it's a it's a big it's a big booth that you got. You're, you're showing up there. Well, the company is showing up there in full force. It looks like. Uh, yeah. So I am uh, I'm super excited to announce that uh, Alpha Hama will be at Google Expo Worldwide, um, and we are very happy to participate, and we are very happy to have that. Uh, very thankful to have that platform, and that event organized, uh, because it's also. Um, it's a it's an avenue for us to be able to directly interact uh, with the consumers because we don't get that uh, as much because we're you know B two B business most of the time so we don't get to actually interact with the consumers and talk to them all the time and this is the opportunity for us to do that so I'm super happy to uh, to announce that we'll be at uh, the Hook Expo worldwide and I am uh, excited for people to be able to interact and get their hands on this uh, brand, on our brand of Fahama and uh, try it and they'll be their own judge. As many as many reviews that they see, as many uh, uh, feedback they get, but always be a judge of your own, so. Oops, sorry about that. Right. So yeah, so you, are you are you gonna be out there? Cause I I heard that you you're sadly not gonna be out there. You have prior engagements, but you're gonna be out there in spirit. I will be out there in spirit. Uh, I will have. Uh, I'm working on a uh, cutout board of myself over there. Uh, but a lot of our uh, all of uh, my partners, a lot of the VPs will be there, mm -hmm. uh, and some people from uh, the marketing will be. Uh, will be there, but unfortunately, I won't be there due to a conflicting of personal engagements uh, that I'll be outside the country completely. I want to be in the country to be able to fly for one day and come back, but uh, you'll be taken care of. Everybody will be there uh, as friendly as me and even more friendly than I am uh, and uh, more engaging and uh, down to earth people that I work with. So I'm super excited. I mean, you're a super friendly guy, as people can see now, but you're also a super giving guy, as like you gave someone your sweater at, in Chicago. It's still there. He, li he literally. Yeah, very special. Uh, but yes, I did give my uh, my sweater to uh, to Cheyenne, but it won't be able to fit in it uh, from DMZ. And shout out to DMZ, um, DMZ group. Uh, they were they took care of me when I was there, uh, rolling with them. So. Uh, thanks to Dutch and Travis and Jeremy and Cheyenne um, because it was the last minute thing for me to go there uh, but uh, they they took care of me over there so it would be great 
Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. But we're gonna switch gears here and get back more into the product uh, because I was looking forward to stealing another one of your sweaters in Vegas, but unfortunately, <laughs> I, I might I might have to steal the cutout or make a deal with them and be like, can I get this cutout and I'll just put you in the back here. Eventually, so, eventually somebody will win, will win that cutout. <laughs> not coming back with me so <laughs> whoever wants to ship it with them because we're more than happy to all right so now that i got you in the hot seat here we gotta ask some questions about the product so i have a couple things written down here so how does the uh, alpha comma tobacco handle under either high heat or low heat situations because i know a lot of people like me i smoke very high heat all the time so certain tobaccos are more to my liking or more to my smoking pre uh, preference. Hey, Travis, how you doing? Oh, oh hello, Brad, by the way. Uh, shout outs there. But uh, how do you, uh, what would be the ideal way for smoking your uh, Alpha Comma brands that are on the market right now? So uh, you, you said it, uh, uh, you know, you, you stated the statement, everyone smokes differently and it's subjectively uh, um, for how you want to handle it. So the feedback that we get, I smoke normal, uh, really, I don't know what is a uh, high heat or not. Mm -hmm. um, three charcoals on the head, and it, it's great. So, uh, <laughs> so, but in in general, uh, the feedback that we've got, uh, it can handle heat very well, and I've tested it uh, lately. It can handle heat; it doesn't char. Uh, it's pretty great. Um, so it's really a subjective, a very preference, uh, but it can. It can take heat. Don't don't be um, don't be scared to give it some heat. So uh, it's been tested, and uh, the feedback was was good. And other reviewers out there can vouch for it. Uh, but uh, it's it's been great. It's been great uh, knowing that it can take uh, the heat that people really like. Yeah, because people will subject it to all different types of manner of heat out there. Uh, I can guarantee you that. Do you uh, do you have a favorite bowl that you would uh, suggest people? Like, I know a lot of people when it comes to uh, your type of tobacco, they would use an Egyptian style bowl, like a uh, like a, a traditional clay head. I I'm here. I'm smoking it out of alpaca Apache. Uh, what what bowls do you like, or do you see yourself using more often than not with your brand? So. Uh... Again, personal preference, that's mm -hmm. the DS preferences. Yes. Uh, so I smoke, um, when I want to use the uh, heat management, I always use a foam bowl. I use the Apache medium or alpaca, um, large, I'm terrible with names, uh, and the hookah john, uh, 80 feet AD. And I put my blonde leaf in there. It works just great with the provost. Mm -hmm. But when I use a straight uh, charcoal or nothing, I, I pack a, a Egyptian clay bowl or the uh, the new Don Turkish or the Don Evil. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh, more partial. I do like my 80 foot 80 a lot. Uh, other people are on the fence about the bowl, but I really like that bowl a lot. So, uh, what are your top three best selling flavors right now to market? Um, so the um, pa passion fruit, passion fruit mint, already pre mixed. Uh, those are like I count them as one. Yeah. Uh, the rarest. Oh, the rarest um, is very good. The rarest is uh, uh, surprisingly, and the uh, orange mint, mm -hmm. ice mint. We have the ice mint, mm -hmm. uh, the mint flavor, uh, and also we have uh, the mountain breeze uh, flavor. For, pe for people not familiar with mountain breeze or the rarest, what would you profile them like? Ooh, uh, the mountain breeze. Uh, let me start with the rarest. The rarest is our. Uh, Pink lemonade. Yes. The lemonade flavor, pink lemonade. Mm -hmm. uh, very uh, soft, very easy to smoke uh, uh, flavor. Um, and the mountain breeze is, oh, it's it's a it's a take on uh, blueberry and mint and some ice. So it's there. got a generally like fruity minty flavor. Yeah, very. It's a fruity. It's a yeah, mountain breeze is a fruity with a little bit of ice and this into it. Uh, Hence the uh, mountain breeze. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Moise here was yeah. saying his iced tea flavors are really good. What iced tea flavors do you have? So um, our iced teas, uh, we have uh, lemon iced tea, mm -hmm. uh, pineapple iced tea, grapefruit iced tea, wow. passion fruit iced tea, okay. and peach iced tea. I wasn't expecting all those iced tea flavors. I was expecting one flavor. <laughs> but you have, you have a lot. Um, yeah. And grapefruit. Uh, so we have the ice grapefruit mint. 
uh, which also is great, and the lemon mint. Uh, so we have about um, like 10 top selling, like mm-hmm. 100 top selling, very top selling. Uh, and we have other flavors that are uh, tremendously uh, uh, picking up, uh, such as like the lava, uh, such as uh, strawberry, mm-hmm. uh, so like very, very natural tasting. You do um, have a wide range, even if it's from iced tea to any other we have, flavors. Uh, we have traditionals and we have our own. We have the traditional flavors like uh, like any other company, and we also have our own, uh, it's the, the passion fruit, the rarest, our own mixes. Uh, we have the Amore, we have the uh, Gummy Candy now, and we have the Velvet Bear. Those are all wow. new, new to the market, the yeah. Gum Cinnamon. Uh, those are new to the market. They're not they're not for sale yet until like next <laughs> uh, week. So, um, but they're in the States. So uh, definitely, day. definitely keep an eye and, and keep an ear to the ground because I'm pretty sure he will let everyone know when these do launch. He's not going to keep you out in the, in the dark. Uh, while we're on the topic of you know, flavors, or is there anything new coming out for Alpha Comma that we should be thinking about or be uh, looking for in the immediate future? Um, can you say that one more time? Sorry. I was, say, uh, I was saying, is there anything new, like different for the company that will be launching here in the United States soon? Uh, maybe, you know, maybe not your traditional, you know, cut or traditional uh, blonde leaf tobacco, maybe something that might be. Uh, a little bit more for uh you know everyone so, else <laughs> yes yes there's, there's uh yep yep i know we do get into uh so there is something in the making uh that we'll be announcing um live at the hookah expo worldwide first time available for everyone at the hookah expo worldwide so uh just i i, uh, I, I tried guys i tried to get it out of him like a little like avengers like spoilers <laughs> But, you know, if you're going to the Vegas Expo, definitely check out the booth if you're not familiar with the product or if you want to see what he's talking about because it's going to be it's going to be something amazing. I guarantee you something. Uh, he's uh, so he's something that we want to uh, introduce to the market and we want to make a big bang at the Hookah Expo Worldwide and to make it exclusive to the Hookah Expo Worldwide, uh, the announcement to engage people, to make people want to go there and see stuff. So introduce new stuff. And that I think a lot of vendors are doing that. So uh, there's an incentive of going to the Hookah Expo Worldwide where you will be able to actually first time interact with product that not available for sale anywhere else besides in the actual Hookah Expo Worldwide. So you'll be the first one to have your hands on these specific uh, uh, products. That's that's very exciting and very intriguing for you for those of you who don't know what it is. But here's a here's a very interesting question from Bracken real quick. What online vendors currently sell your product? Because I know a lot of people might want to, after this live here, they might want to go and be like, well, you know what? He said he was talking about passion food. He was talking about iced tea flavors. I want to try to get my hands on like a 250 or whatever. Where can they yeah. get this uh, immediately, like right now? Well, not right now because I want you guys to watch this. But after this, you can go check it out. So right now, uh, we're available at 5 com, and we're also available at hookahjunkie.com. Um, and then, uh, because it's a company strategy, as, as we as we grow, we'll be available at more mm-hmm. um, very soon. But today, um, you could go to fivestarhooka.com and hookajunkie.com to purchase uh, Alpha Hama for sure. So definitely, if you are curious, definitely go check that out. You can also see they have like their lines of what different flavors. Because maybe you don't like you know passion fruit. Maybe iced tea isn't your favorite thing. You know, so maybe you want to go there. You know, head over, hit that little drop-down menu, and check out the other flavors they got. So I think we co- Chris- Go ahead. Sorry, uh, Kristen had uh, this question. Um, uh, when you say um, ice as part of the profile, is that a different kind of mint? Mm, um, question. Uh, mint is menthol, so you get that uh, minty menthol flavor uh, profile. But ice is more of a cooling sensation. Uh, to the actual uh, to to the product, so you, when you inhale, you have a, a cool and so it's different than menthol cool. It's more of like uh, if if you had to uh, take an ice cube in your mouth and you you, see, you feel that ice cool sensation, that's what you get. Mm, very interesting. So I think we covered a lot here today. We got to know a little bit about the man behind Alpha Kama here, Mr. Badia, not Badi. 
And uh, this is the part where I want to give uh, you full control. If there's anything that we missed, uh, any any shout outs or anyone you want to you want to thank, uh, this is your time. So go ahead. So I, I want to thank. Well, first, I want to thank you for having me, uh, Chris. I want to thank you for uh, all the things that you do for the community uh, and for specifically Hooker University uh, for all the content that you produce. Uh, and I want to thank Hooker University and everybody behind it and THL and Hooker Unbiased and, and, and these uh, communities that allow us to uh, echo our voice, echo our product to all the consumers. <laughs> and. Um, uh, shout out all to my uh, to my partners and to all of our vendors uh, who believe in our product, who carries our product, and who wants to push our product forward. And to everyone who actually joined us here today and uh, didn't join us and watched it later, too. And um, yeah, please, uh, I am very approachable on uh, Facebook. If you don't know, I am very much. You can ask anyone. Uh, so if you have any questions or anything like that, uh, um, just please um, reach out to me directly on Facebook and uh, I'll, I'll answer all your questions. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. And hopefully we don't take too much of your time, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this uh, and this was helpful. I would say go to Hoka Expo Worldwide if you haven't purchased your ticket. If you can, please join us there. Uh, again, thanks to Huka, uh, John, and thanks to Jake Jacobson for putting this together um, and for being um, kind of the pioneers of changing the Huka Expo or the Huka uh, scene in our uh, in our country here. So. Yeah, definitely. I definitely got to reach out to Jake and uh, talk to him in a little bit. But uh, yeah, uh, we really have to get out there. Uh, we really want to start doing more um, hookah meetups in different cities and different towns to get people together because ultimately that's what hookah is about. Sitting down with people who are, you know, willing to smoke with you, talk to you, hang out with you. You know, I, I, I mean, that's what that's why I do what I do. You know, give people the facts, let them make the, the judgment on the flavors. Definitely. Uh, but thank you, Padilla. Uh, thank you, uh, Travis, Jeremy, Colton, Ali, everyone here at... Uh, Hookah University for allowing me to live stream this to you guys. Uh, Kristen, uh, I will get back to you tomorrow. I would say shoot me a message. Also, if you're not, uh, you, you feel free to shoot Padilla a message. Ask him where you can get one of his sweaters at. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like always, thank you guys for joining and participating. Thanks. I appreciate it very much. See you guys next time. And Kristen, uh, shoot me a message and I can answer your question there uh, about custom flavors. Please. Uh, I'd love to answer that, but uh, for now, thank you so much. You guys have a good night. Thank you, guys.